Hi, today I will show you how you can stream live market data, feed the data into your analysis code and send alerts to your phone or email when opportunities are confirmed on the market. All of this can be automated in Python so you can save yourself from sitting hours behind the screen, observing the charts and waiting for a specific pattern formation. And usually I get a lot of questions about algorithmic trading and automating trading tasks using smart programs. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own live trading system in a simple way using Python language. So let's start with the coding part. This is our Jupyter Notebook file and this is the whole code. The first thing I wanted to show you is the size of the code. It's very small and very simple. It can end up to here. And if you want to test multiple assets or multiple stocks, we can continue using this part. So as you can see, it's not a big code. It's very simple. If you are not very experienced or familiar with Python, you can still follow the code and understand the different parts of it. In this first cell, I'm using the Y Finance package and I'm defining a new function called get data. It takes the symbol for which we want to get the data. And this function will download or stream the data, the recent data of um, the open, close, high and low prices. And it will return a data frame using these parameters. So here I'm using period equal two days. So I'm only downloading the last two days and we'll see why. And the interval is one day, meaning the time frame that we are downloading is the daily time frame. Then to download the data or to stream the live data, I can simply call the function get data. And by default, I'm using the Apple symbol. We can change it, use the Amazon or any other symbol from the Y Finance and you can download the different data. So just to make sure my function is working properly, I'm printing the historical underscore data variable, which is the data frame I'm putting the data in. And this is what we are getting. We have open, high, low, close, the volume, the dividends and stock splits and so on. So I'm going to run the cell first one, define the function, and then we're calling the function and we will see the data we're getting. So this is yesterday's, I'm recording this on the 19th. This is yesterday's and the previous day's uh, data. So we're using the daily time frame. We can see that we have two bars, yesterday and the day before. Then just for the sake of this example and this code, I'm using one function, test engulfing. So I'm testing if we have a bullish engulfing pattern or a bearish engulfing pattern using these conditions here. So I'm not going into all the details, uh, I, I assume you know what's a bullish engulfing and a bearish engulfing pattern. So these are defined by these conditions. I'm returning one if it's a bearish engulfing pattern and the function returns two if it's a bullish engulfing pattern. If we don't have any specific pattern, we just return zero. And we can try now to run the function on the historical data that we've just downloaded and to see if the function is working. So now we're returning zero. We don't have any bullish or bearish engulfing uh, pattern for the moment. So remember, I'm using just the Apple stock prices in the last couple of days. So if yesterday's uh, formed a bullish or a bearish engulfing pattern, we're going to get the, um, the signal in the program and we can start our position today, for example, buying or selling. In this cell, I just made some fake values just to make sure that the function is detecting indeed the uh, bullish and bearish engulfing patterns. So it's working well. I did my tests. I, I assume this is very simple, so we shouldn't be worried about it. Now, at this point, if any signal is detected by the bullish or bearish engulfing patterns, I would like to send myself an email that would give me an alert on my phone wherever I am. And in this case, I can just log in into my trading platform and analyze the market further and check if I can take, for example, a long or a short position. Now, just to be more specific regarding the uh, engulfing pattern, this is just an example. I just took the engulfing pattern as an example for the sake of this video. You might want to make something more complete, more complex. So you might want to test the engulfing patterns happening around support and resistance levels, for example, within a certain trend using the moving average. You can add anything here in these functions and define your own system. But the most important part is that when you have a certain pattern forming on the market, you can send yourself a signal or an email that would you would get on your phone and you can log in to take the trade. 
So to do this, I'm using Gmail's API. So you would need a Gmail username and Gmail password. These were defined in this credentials Python file that I've just created and I put my credentials in there. To do these, to create these credentials, you have to have Gmail mail account and you have to create an app password. So more on this, you can Google it and check it out. So it's, um, it's a simple procedure. You log in into your email basically, and you uh, toggle on some options that would allow you to create a password for an application that you can use outside of the Gmail environment. And this is how I got my Gmail username and Gmail password for this application. Then I'm creating an email message instance that I'm going to use. I'm defining a subject which is called info signal. This is basically the title of the email you will be receiving. And I'm putting everything into a function called some job for now. The message will be trading signal message and we're going to concatenate later on the signals into this uh, the body of this message. So historical data is equal to get data. I'm streaming the data now because every time we call the function some job, we should update the data. We have it in historical data variable. And if test engulfing, taking into account the historical data that we have just downloaded is equal to one, it means we have a bearish signal, a bearish engulfing pattern. And we will be um, changing the message, the body of the text uh, of the email to the signal is one bearish. And in the opposite case, if we have a signal that's equal to two, we, we will send this as well. So the signal is two uh, bullish. Then we create uh, the content of the email and all the needed parameters. For example, we have email from the Gmail user to the Gmail user. So I'm sending myself basically an email and we can set the content to be the message that we've just created, which is the, uh, the signal basically. Then we create a context variable, which is equal to SSL.create default context. We're using Gmail's SMTP server with these parameters, so 465, and the context will be equal to context. Then we log in using the credentials, and we send the emails from the current user to the current user as a string. Then we close the server. So uh, when we call this function called some job, which, which contains all of this, all of this is going to happen. So we're streaming the data, we're checking if there's a signal, and then we're sending ourselves an email. Now this becomes interesting if you want to check multiple stocks or multiple assets. And this is where you can, instead of using one symbol, you can use a list of symbols. So the Apple, the Nvidia, PayPal. I've added these three stocks in this list. And then instead of checking for one symbol, we're checking if any of these symbols or any of these uh, stocks is returning um, a signal, a bullish engulfing or a bearish engulfing signal. And we're concatenating the messages or the signals into one body for one single email. When all of this is done, so for symbol in all the symbols, check for each symbol, the historical data, just get the data, test if there's an engulfing pattern. And if it's the case, just add this um, signal into the body of our message. Same thing if it's a bullish engulfing pattern. And then we send ourselves an email just as we have done in the previous case. So now when I call the sum job function, it's going to acquire the three stocks data for the last couple of days, checking if there is any signal and sending all of this into an email. Now, ideally you don't want to run this every hour because we are using the daily time frame. So you need to schedule this. This is why I'm using a scheduler here. So from APS scheduler, um, import blocking scheduler, etc. So this part here, this part of the code is going to schedule launching this function. So we need to comment this part here, some job. We're going to schedule launching this function one time a day at midnight, let's say. And now we can uncomment this part. And what this does is first it's going to create a scheduler. It's going to add a job uh, of the function, some job. So it's going to launch everything, but it's going to launch it on Monday, Tuesday until Friday at hour zero, minute zero, so it's midnight uh, using the UTC time zone. And it's only going to happen once per day using a misfire grace time of 15 times 60 uh, seconds, so around 15 minutes. So in other words, you can just launch this program, skip this cell because this cell is only using one stock. If you want to put a list of stocks, just use this cell 
and it's going to be enough to test or probe the market for you and send you a report by an email at midnight, let's say. So this way, if you wake up in the morning, you check your email one time. If you have any signals, you log in, you do your trades. Otherwise, you can leave to work and get going with your life. That's all I had to tell you for this one. I hope you found the information helpful and you're liking this video and the content. As usual, anything you want to share, any ideas you would like us to discuss, please leave a comment, drop a like, and support this channel. Thank you so much for your attention and until our next one, trade safe. See you next time.